On Thursday, SpaceX conducted a static fire test with one of its Falcon 9 rockets. While the company initially stated that the next Starlink satellite launch would take place on the 18th, the launch has now been postponed. The company announced on Twitter that the static fire had been completed successfully and that it was still on track to launch 52 new Starlink satellites into orbit on Friday. However, later that day, the company issued an update stating that it was delaying the launch in order to examine the data from the static fire test without explaining why. Welcome to First Class Tech, and in this video, we'll see why SpaceX delayed Starlink launch after the Falcon 9 static fire test and further updates. SpaceX tested one of its Falcon 9 rockets around 10 a.m. Pacific on November 17th and announced that its next Starlink launch would take place as early as Friday, November 18th. SpaceX canceled those plans seven hours later, citing the need to take a closer look at data gathered during the test. According to sources, Falcon 9 booster B1061 has been assigned to the launch and will be in charge of the static fire portion of Thursday's launch rehearsal. B1061 is one of six Falcon boosters that have completed 10 launches. When it launches SpaceX's Starlink 2-4 mission, it will become the fourth or fifth Falcon booster to launch 11 times. However, following SpaceX's unusual post-test announcement, the rocket and its Starlink payload will be forced to wait indefinitely while the company decides how to proceed. It's not the first time SpaceX has postponed a launch indefinitely following a static fire test, but it's the first in years. SpaceX suspends launch attempts on a semi-regular basis to conduct inspections, minor repairs, or component replacements when data is incorrect or contradictory, but those plans usually include the next launch date. Even SpaceX's website has been updated this time to state that a new target launch date will be announced once confirmed. The last time a pre-launch static fire was explicitly blamed for a launch delay was in August 2019 when SpaceX fired up a Falcon 9 rocket ahead of its Amos 17 launch, didn't like what it saw, decided to replace a booster valve, and then performed a second static fire test to clear the rocket to launch. It's possible that the events of Starlink 2-4 will follow a similar pattern. According to sources, Starlink 2-4 had already been delayed several times, missing targets on November 16th and 17th to November 18th. Starlink 2-4, whenever it launches, will be SpaceX's 65th operational Starlink mission, adding another 52 Starlink version 1.5 satellites to the Constellation's Group 2 shell. Group 2 is the third largest of five shells that comprise SpaceX's first 4,408 satellite Starlink constellation, which will eventually house 720 satellites. SpaceX is nearing completion of two main 1,584 satellite shells that will orbit Earth's mid-latitudes. It has also begun the launch of one of two smaller shells, Groups 3 and 5, that orbit the Earth's poles. Group 2 splits the difference with a 70-degree tilt relative to the Earth's equator orbit. According to astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell's data, and assuming that SpaceX intends to put as many satellites into orbit as possible, Groups 1 and 4 appear to be 4 or 5 launches away from completion. Groups 3 and 5 require an additional 8 launches. Group 2 will take another 13 launches, including Starlink 2-4. Unless something unexpected happens, SpaceX has about 25 launches left to complete its first Starlink constellation. SpaceX launched 32 operational Starlink missions in the first 10 months of 2022, and its launch cadence has increased throughout the year. Bode well for the constellation's completion by mid to late 2023. By the way, if you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Getting back to the topic. A SpaceX recovery ship is en route to the second expandable Falcon 9 rocket launch in nine days, more than a thousand kilometers away. A Falcon 9 rocket carrying the UTIL-SAT-10B geostationary communication satellite was set to launch from SpaceX's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station LC-40 pad. For unknown reasons, the French communications provider paid more to get the most out of Falcon 9, forcing SpaceX to expand the rocket's booster rather than attempting to land and reuse it. The mission will be UTILSAT's third Falcon 9 launch in less than three weeks, completing a trio of launch contracts secretly signed with SpaceX to move satellites off competitor Ariane Group's unavailable Ariane 5 and delayed Ariane 6 rockets. 
UTIL-SAT-10B will be SpaceX's second expendable Falcon 9 launch in a row, and the third Falcon 9 launch to expend a booster this month, in a rare coincidence. However, unlike the other two missions, not the entire Falcon 9 rocket tasked with launching UTIL-SAT-10B will be lost. While SpaceX is best known for its spectacular Falcon booster recovery and reuse, the company has also become the first entity in the world to successfully recover and reuse the deployable nose cone that protects satellite payloads during launch. More importantly, the recovery and reuse of Falcon fairings has quietly become routine, reliable, and even accepted by an increasing number of paying customers. A minimum of 40 of the 52 Falcon rockets launched in 2022 used at least one reuse fairing half, and four of those 52 launches carried Dragon spacecraft. The performance penalty added by the extra mass of the hardware required to recover Falcon fairings appears to be so minor that SpaceX can still recover fairings, even when a given mission requires the company to expand a Falcon booster. This has become easily clear in recent weeks. On November 1st, a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket took off for the fourth time, and for the first time, one of its three first stage boosters was intentionally expended. Despite the booster's destruction and record-breaking speed at main engine cutoff, SpaceX recovered both of Falcon Heavy's hypersonic fairing halves after they re-entered Earth's atmosphere and splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean nearly 1,500 kilometers downrange. 11 days later, SpaceX launched two Intelsat communication satellites with a Falcon 9 rocket. Both fairing halves were recovered once more, this time around 960 kilometers downrange. UTIL-SAT-10B's fairing halves have the potential to travel further than any other piece of Falcon hardware before a successful recovery, aiming for a region 1,015 kilometers downrange. Fairing recovery, in comparison to booster recovery, is more of a convenience than a necessity, and was pursued in part because it allowed SpaceX to avoid significantly expanding its fairing production facilities in Hawthorne, California. Each Falcon Block 5 booster reuse saved SpaceX tens of millions of dollars, according to CEO Elon Musk, who previously stated that a standard Falcon fairing half costs around $3 million to build. However, given that SpaceX is now routinely reusing fairing halves five, six, or even seven times every two to three years, each fairing recovery is likely to save SpaceX a few million dollars. Musk specifically stated that the fairing accounts for approximately 10% of the cost of a new Falcon 9 rocket that price could be higher than SpaceX's Falcon 9 launch fee, which was $62 million in 2017 and has since increased to $67 million in 2022. As with SpaceX's most recent launch, which marked the 14th mission of Falcon 9 booster B1051, the company has assigned another old Falcon 9 booster to launch UTIL-SAT-10B. The mission will be Falcon 9 B1049's 10th and final launch effectively ending the career of SpaceX's oldest booster. In September 2018, B1049 made its debut after more than four years. Older Falcon Block 5 boosters are generally more finicky and high maintenance, which explains why B1049 will retire after four fewer launches than B1051. In the three and a half years since, SpaceX has gained extensive experience recovering and refurbishing Falcon 9 Block 5 boosters reducing its record turnaround time from 74 days to 21 days. Thus, SpaceX should have no trouble turning Falcon Heavy side boosters B1064 and B1065 for a second launch in January 2023, roughly 60 to 91 days after their debut. Because assembling and preparing Falcon Heavy for launch takes significantly longer than Falcon 9, there will most likely be a two, three, or even four week gap between Falcon Heavy's next two launches. However, it appears that SpaceX could launch two Falcon Heavy rockets in one calendar month if USS F-67 and VSAT-3 are ready to fly during narrow windows around late January. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Before that, we'd like to know what are your thoughts about the Falcon 9 static fire test. Let us know in the comments. Like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you.